but it's not so much new. About 25 years ago, um, my mother started um, reading to uh, Latino children in East LA over here uh, in Lincoln Park. And uh, my dad, my mom, and I would just go and sit on the lawn and you know read to two, three, ten, whatever kids showed up. Um, at that time, the park was a place of murder, drug, drug deals, and rapes. Um, 25 years later, and I'm proud to say that we've survived a quarter of a century and under very tough conditions. There is now the Margo Oliver Theater, beautiful theater done by UCLA State, the Art Museum, where we have the Siqueiros, uh, Diego Rivera, the Frida Kahlo, all the best uh, Latino artists are exhibited there. Uh, we have a dance studio, we have classes, we feed and teach um, 365 days a year, 700 kids a week. Um, we're expanding our programs into healthcare. Uh, an example is that I'm setting up a program where we teach um, mothers who, especially in Latino families, are the gateway to the family. Um, we give them prenatal and postnatal counseling, but at the end of that course, they get a, a certificate, they get a, a registration certificate so that they can then teach other mothers and earn some money at it, that course, who then get certified, who can teach other mothers who then get certified, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we're also uh, arranging to have the x-ray band from the city come down once a month, uh, the inoculation clinic band come down once every two months, and putting together a list of doctors who are donating free time because since Proposition 187, um, many Latino parents are afraid to go to regular doctors because they don't know, they're concerned that if they're turned in, they'll be deported and their children not here and put the foster homes. So a lot of people who need medical attention and not getting it, they're going to be. death about 10 years ago has been um, running Plaza as the chairman of the Board of Emeritus and yesterday he uh, passed the torch on to me. Uh, and um, having uh, pretty much achieved my goals in the other um, uh, political active, uh, activism areas that, that I've been involved with, which you guys know about, um, I'm now pretty much cleaning my table for the rest of my life to focus on Plaza. Uh, it's, the, the, the difference that I'm bringing to it is in the last 10 years, it's really been a matter of survival for, for us. Um, but there's a, a new spirit and a new wind blowing uh, of really being part of something wonderful there. And I'm bringing back essentially the concept, and it's a concept that I want to show with, with all of you. Um, the, what we do is we try to build a bridge out of the barrio for young children through art. Not necessarily, if you're not talented athletically, if you're not uh, a good uh, uh, mugger, if you have <laughs> all the traditional means of making money down the body, um, you have the possibility of uh, finding a, a bridge out to a better life, or, or a bridge, or staying there, creating a better life for yourself through art. Um, one of the, the, the successes that we're very proud of is the group Los Lobos, is our kids. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, it's the best damn rock and roll band in America. <laughs> uh, forgive me for talking very quickly and for looking like somebody hit me on the head with a ball camera. I'm a little tired today, but very happy. Um, and that tells me that I've been having, having fun. Uh, not only that, you guys cured my back. It's been bothering me, and I've been having such a good time the last couple of days that it's bothered me at all. <laughs> Okay, Paulette, and, and the stuff that you wanted me to mention before we go to Q&A, was there anything else? California. Ah, yes. Um, I wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart, and thank you from the bottom of my heart, um, for the wonderful letter writing campaign for California. Um, we are becoming a force to be reckoned with, I'm very proud to say. Um, regrettably, um, the pilot, which is a wonderful pilot, I'm very proud to be a part of it, my dad was in it with me. Um, I play, uh, I'm the, the in-house bad guy who's half-brother to William Shockley, who they spun off Medicine Woman. Um, so there's a nice Cain and Abel East of Eden thing going on. Um, I play a banker, Ryan McKay, or as I like to refer to myself, Lion Ryan McKay. Um, regrettably, uh, the pilot was not picked up for the fall season, but it's not, it wasn't because of the quality of the show. It was, as it is many times the case in um, network uh, politics, um, politics. Um, there was a gentleman whose name I'm inclined to mention, but I guess I won't, um, who had his own pilot and basically sent Beth Sullivan, who's the producer, 
producer of both uh, Dr. Quinn and uh, California, and a dear friend. Uh, since Dr. Quinn has become a dear friend, uh, and wrote the part for me in, in California. Uh, and, and I think to a degree the letter writing campaign on Dr. Quinn had something to do with that because she felt that um, she could safely, the tendency, strangely enough, is not to put friends in because you're worried about, well, I'm putting them in because they're a friend. In this case, the, the, the writing response had lit, literally, uh, close to 2,000 letters, um, was so impressive that she had the basis uh, to go forward and start in a, in, in, in a pilot. Um, that uh, I'm very proud to have been associated with. Anyway, uh, Dr. Quinn itself was a mid-season replacement, and uh, we've just uh, changed our sights slightly, and we're looking forward to uh, uh, kicking in for mid-season. If not, if that doesn't happen, um, Beth has already had interest in Paramount and uh, Fox Network. Personally, I'd be more interested in Fox Network, because although um, they pay about the same that this Boston firm is worth, <laughs> um, they do guarantee you uh, uh, the first season, 22 uh, episodes. Um, and that's such a lovely luxury for an artist to have to develop a character and establish an art um, that I'd rather take less money and um, have a better shot at making a wonderful show for you. Yeah. Um, just to catch you up, and then we'll go to Q&A um, on the stuff that I've been doing. Uh, the film that I just finished is, I hope, tentatively titled Space Marines. Um, and it is with Billy Worth and Meg Foster, um, Katie Huffman, uh, Sherman Augustus, a wonderful group of people. It was, I mean, I've survived revolutions, I've been knifed, I've been exploded, I've been everything you can imagine on location all over the world. I have never been to a more difficult location. Um, but the value uh, that I've learned to take from these experiences has nothing to do with the reviews or the receipts. Um, but more of the friendships that you make in the course of the experience. It's like being in a lifeboat with people that you're going to cross paths with normally in the course of your life. And you're all thrown together from different backgrounds, with different personalities, and you've got to work together to survive. It sounds like Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, um, you know, the funny thing is I end up on these shows, for whatever reason, tending to be pop-up. Uh, and uh, in this case, it was certainly the, the, the fact. And um, these were like an uh, extended family to me also. Um, and uh, we helped each other survive it. And without each other's help, I don't know how if we would survive it. Um, I was almost killed. Uh, Billy was almost killed. Uh, special effects uh, special effects is working on bad. And instead of blowing a big bunch of a thousand sparkles, one huge damn comet of fire came out, ricocheted off the wall, and jumped on Billy's face. Um, before I went down, having read the script and having about 300 years' experience, um, since it was a space show, I called the wardrobe of the prop people, and they said that you know uh, the wardrobe would be wearing helmets. I said, put a plexiglass visor on my helmet so I'm safer from doing the special effects, because I knew that they were going to be blowing stuff up all over the place, and we'd be working 18-hour days, and we would just be work. Um, and the whole front of my visor is just charred and melted. If that visor hadn't been there, um, I couldn't have left. Um, Billy came within a, a, a cat's whisker of being blind of a hill, and he was this far away from me. Um, and actually, in that experience, um, I, I, mean, I remember going into what, in my memory, was a wall of fire, because I heard Billy make a noise that had the same effect on me as my daughter going, Dad! And the classic rule is you don't break blocking if something goes wrong in the um, I broke that rule and went straight in after him to my basement. He came straight out of the fire with his face literally on fire. Uh, I poured cold water on him. Um, I got some oxygen uh, on him. Uh, somebody called 911. I carried him to the ambulance, hurting my back because I jumped on the loading dock. Put so him in the ambulance, um, went to the hospital with him by telling various people that I was his brother, his father, and his lover. <laughs> Was, was able to talk my way through all the various securities in Parkland Hospital in Dallas. It's famous for its security. Uh, and ended up being literally sitting next to his bed all night long in ICU. And every time he started to get up, they wanted to tie him down. And I thought, you know, he's in shock, he's uh, under morphine. And, you know, the last thing you want to do with a young kid is tie him down. Um, so I just stayed with him and did what uh, the angels did last night, which was, you know, um, just stay up all night and stick with him and, and make sure that he got through it. And he did. And he did. Now I'll forever. Oh. Um.